I have gas. Gear acquisition syndrome. Last week I got a Canon 6D, today I got a Panasonic GH5, and a GX8, and a Phantom 4 Pro drone. Two weeks ago I got this light, the Godox SL60W, and two years ago I got two of the YN300 from Yongnu. Last year I got the Nikon D750, and before that the Nikon D800, which I still have. Last year I also got the Canon SL2. So yes, it's true, I have a bit of an addiction. The deals I've been getting are great, but the saddest part is I have all this gear, yet I'm not really using it. If you compared my video gear acquisition to the video gear usage time, the graph would look like this emoji here, which you're looking at on the iPhone 11, which I just got, but don't really need. But, 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 I have a good reason for all these things. Let's list them out, shall we? I wanted a big full-frame sensor to get into the high ISO and bocalicious full-frame photography game, and my clients helped pay for it. I mean, I bought this camera with my own money when I was 17. I bought the lenses first with my crop body Nikon D90, the 24-70 from Tamron, the 85-18, which I then upgraded to the 1.4, and the 50mm 1.4, which I got for the same price as my Nifty 50 1.8. But then I wanted to shoot video, and well, the Nikon was crap. Couldn't autofocus on me to save my life, and I didn't have any friends who wanted to assist when I filmed. So then it became the Canon SL2, with just one lens, a great lens for portraits and self video, but it just wasn't wide enough. So then my second Canon lens, a 10 to 18 for those big wide shots, fantastic. I also needed to get lights so my eyes and the scene could really pop, but instead of giving me more chances to film, while I was in college, it slowed me down. Having to set up and break down lights for each shoot in my living room meant even more time setting up and less time spent filming. Aha, well now I've moved to a bigger apartment, set my lights and camera in a permanent spot, and made it all voice controlled. That should solve the problem, right? Hey Google, production time. See, this is a really awesome setup, and it's nice and wide, I can show you all my gear, but the issue is, my room is usually a mess. I mean, I'm running in and out between shoots and actual 9 to 5 work, and so a lot of times I just don't want to clean my room. and that. That little five minutes of cleaning is what keeps me from making videos like this. But back to the gear. The D800 started having issues, missing focus in a majority of shots, and I needed something that I knew would get sharp images for my clients. So it's time to decide between a mirrorless C6 with 4K video that was a bit out of budget or more of the wallet-friendly D750. What a beast the D750 is. Great autofocus, lovely images, high burst speeds, and it's still fairly lightweight. But it still does not autofocus during video. Well, that doesn't matter if I'm filming wide and on a gimbal, right? Wrong. I've had this gimbal for two months and used it only twice. Whoops. So anyways, I'm using the Canon. I love it. The Wi-Fi app is great. But I start learning about LUTs and color grading in Final Cut Pro 10, and I'm possessed by the dream of shooting a flat image with V-log or C-log or S-log or N-log. But alas, that means getting yet another camera. So I hop on Craigslist, looking for a Nikon C6, and stumble upon this GH5 kit with the almighty V-log. What a flat picture profile. So here I am today, filming 10-bit V-log internal on a GH5 with four lenses that I've acquired along with it. I learn all the functions and features of this camera, like the automated focus pull and the on-camera LUT previews. Most importantly, I learn the camera doesn't matter at all. It's all about my will to film and create. So, I hope you enjoyed this one.